market that breaches new highs every day. A difficult question to answer. Where do you find value? What is one of the most undervalued firms with the most underutilized assets? Where is the whole less than the sum of its parts? Easy, Disney. Last week, Disney, under the cloud cover of activist investor Dan Loeb, paused their dividend and decided to double down on content. I predicted last year that Disney would launch the mother of all rundles, and I think it's about to happen. Second place for having undervalued assets, AT&T. AT&T has underperformed the market and its peers for over a decade. Once the world's largest telephone company, it's now the world's most indebted company carrying almost $160 billion in debt. This debt is a result of a series of acquisitions adding up to a nearly $200 billion price tag in two massive M&A moves. The first, the $67 billion acquisition of DirecTV. The second, the $108 billion takeover of Time Warner, the parent company of HBO and CNN. AT&T's rationale behind acquiring Time Warner was vertical integration, combining content and distribution within one company. The problem, limiting the reach of content to only those who sign up for a specific access service can be problematic unless it is an IQ test, not a decision. Traditional pay TV subscriber numbers in the U.S. hit a peak of 100 million in 2012, but subscribers started cutting the cord at an accelerating pace since 2014, totaling 25 million cancellations since the peak. But it doesn't end there. The industry is facing death by another 25 million cuts in the next five years to 50 million or down to 50 million total subscribers, a level the pay TV model of today cannot survive. In an understandable, if not visionary move, AT&T felt consumers would buy wireless to watch Bill Maher or Sex and the City on their phone. However, however, the DOJ decided their brand had way too much credibility and decided to file antitrust lawsuits against AT&T to block the merger for a year. So the DOJ is down with Apple's 1 billion iOS subscribers, Android's 2.5 billion and Amazon Prime Video and 82% of US households, but AT&T at 130 million subs needed to sell the Cartoon Network and Adult Swim. If that sounds like it makes no fucking sense, trust your instincts. It's as if the DOJ was taking their lead from a dangerously stupid man and his hack. This is a bigger deal than it seems, specifically the delay of the acquisition. HBO Max lost a year of momentum and subscribers, tens of millions, as the DOJ joined the list of other federal agencies who have trashed their brand and credibility. Of the first 4 million subscribers to HBO Max this year, only 25% came through AT&T platforms and bundles. And our research estimates 100% of consumers still have no idea what the difference between HBO and HBO Max is. So AT&T either needs to reduce its dividend to undergo a violent rearranging of its business in 2021, or divest many or most of Time Warner assets. Prediction, AT&T will divest Time Warner assets. Why? It's not that they don't have the leadership or the assets to go full rundle. They don't have the shareholder base, specifically the short and possibly medium-term erosion in revenues and EBITDA would likely send shareholders for the door. AT&T pays a 7% dividend, one of the highest in the S&P 500. When a dividend gets this high, it's not a good thing. It's the illumination of an SOS signal. For example, who else has this type of lofty dividend? Exxon, Altria, Simon Properties, so specifically tobacco, oil, and malls. See a pattern? One of these things is not like the other. AT&T should also pause their dividend, make massive reinvestments in a 5G future across a great $150 billion business, that is regulated and protected and is essentially a duopoly, specifically wireless telco that is AT&T, and then get about the business of selling the other $30 billion business, Time Warner, that is maybe the number four or the number five in an industry that has been featureized, that is facing competitors that will essentially dump their media below cost. The first part of this divestiture selling HBO. The defining art form of our time is television, and HBO is its Picasso. HBO will go down as one of the greatest marriages of talent and storytelling in media history, with hits including The Sopranos, The Wire, 
and Game of Thrones. I tell people I've watched The Wire. I haven't. It's like me carrying my Financial Times. I don't actually read it. But that salmon bitch and me saying I love The Wire makes me feel smarter. HBO success was as much about what was not on it versus what was on it. But under AT&T ownership, the quality filter became porous. And HBO shifted from having the best batting average to chasing Netflix's and Amazon's strategy of gross tonnage. They're bringing a squirt gun to a howitzer fight in the game of mass, diluting the entertainment industry's Zacapa with Captain Morgan. Criminal! Anyway, under new ownership, HBO should go back to its brand roots and produce less, not more content. In the third quarter of 2020, Netflix had 73 million U.S. subscribers paying an average of $13 a month. If HBO can get to the same penetration, and they're already at 57 million, at $15 per month with a luxury position around where less is more, that could generate over 13 billion a year in the U.S. alone. A Netflix revenue multiple of 9.4, that's worth 123 billion, almost a third of AT&T's total value. And this would be a hotly contested auction if in fact they were to decide to sell HBO. An auction that might inspire a bidding war between the two deepest pockets in history, Amazon and Apple. The other crown jewel of AT&T, or at least Time Warner's division of AT&T, CNN. CNN is a bastion of factual news and politics with some of the best journalists and anchors on the planet but it's being monetized incorrectly. It has a business model that is not sustainable. Promoting prostate medications adjacent to Anderson Cooper and Fareed Zakaria isn't the right way to monetize genius. After my seven-day binge of nonstop cable watching this election, I'm of the view that a credible news source maybe shouldn't be monetized at all. Before we propose some ownership models for CNN, some stats to give you a sense of the land it commands. CNN has the youngest audience in cable news, it reaches more people in the U.S. across its platforms than any other news brand. And it had 149 million unique U.S. visitors to its digital properties in October. This brand is a juggernaut. So what should AT&T do with CNN? A few options. One, CNN could follow in the footsteps of the Washington Post and find a benign billionaire similar to Jeff Bezos, mother of all midlife crises. Let's treat him differently than anyone else because he's an innovator. Anyway, the top candidate in my mind, in my mind, simple, Mark Benioff, the founder and CEO of Salesforce who could, in a twist, reunite Time, which he purchased in 2018, with Warner. Mark has the cabbage and, in contrast to the owners of Fox or Facebook, appears to have taken civics in high school. Another option for AT&T, sell CNN to Twitter, and more specifically, Twitter should acquire CNN. Disclosure, I'm a shareholder. CNN could be to Twitter what House of Cards was to Netflix. By the way, it's a good thing they shut down production of House of Cards because it would just be too unrealistic to have someone playing the U.S. president who had been accused of sexual misconduct. Just not, not believable. Of course, paying for news content has never been part of Twitter's playbook or big techs. If it were, CNN could play into the gross futurization of media and entertainment by Apple or Amazon. Ultimately, we as a nation need a unified and trustworthy understanding of what's going on in the world. The divisiveness and Reddit rabbit holes of conspiracies might stop if reliable news was accessible and driven by one incentive to inform versus to profit. There is nothing wrong with AT&T that can't be fixed with what's right with AT&T. Great assets, incredible cash flow, and strong leadership. We leave you with some of our favorite scenes from what I believe in a century from now will be viewed as the most compelling storyteller of the age of TV, HBO. We'll see you next week. They come back because they discover something they imagined no one had ever noticed before. Something they fall in love with. I will be your champion.